capturing the top layer of skin and rubbing in charcoal. Dark, ancient skin and black ink don't offer much contrast. In order to make up the contrast, researchers in the most recent study used a multispectral imaging technique that detected color differences on the skin even in the non-visible range. This upped the contrast of the Iceman's body and revealed a set of chest tattoos not seen before, bringing the final to 61 and they're published in the Journal of Cultural Heritage. Uh, what do they mean? What do the Iceman's tattoos mean, bro? That's what it says. Iceman's 61 tattoos are organized into 19 different groups. Each group of tattoos is simply a set of horizontal or vertical lines. It is believed that the tattoos served as a therapeutic or diagnostic purpose for the Iceman because the tattoo groupings tend to cluster around the lower back and joints. Um, I'm not buying that. Anybody else? It says places where the I Iceman was suffering joint and spinal degeneration. I think that's coincidental. It says uh, the tattoos may have also uh, demonstrated the locations for acupuncture treatments, or perhaps tattoos were the treatment. Doubtful. Again, um, they do that now for cancer patients, so they know where the tattoo, where the the tattoos are, or the area they need to hit, so they don't radiate the whole body in chemo. But I'm just not buying it. Um, it says. The most recent tattoo inventories show uh, with a cluster on his chest where there were no signs of any ailment. This newly discovered cluster could challenge the prevailing theories. Yeah, because the prevailing theories were stupid. Said so the researchers were quick to point out that he may have suffered from other health problems. I don't think it was health. I think it was either religious or like we do now. It, it, it's a part of who you are. Those lines were probably a way that uh, they communicated in the most ancient of ways. And friends, that brings us to the dum de dum de dum de of the day. P.G. Veer, Daily Caller, Jewish journalist compared to Hitler for doubting climate change claims. But hey, didn't Hitler kill the Jews? Therefore, he's Jewish and he couldn't be a Hitler. They slandered this poor Jewish guy because... He doesn't believe in global warming. Well, I hate to be the one to break this to you for the nine millionth time. Look up Lord Moncton. Look up Climate Gate. And you will learn that man is not warming the planet. Man is not cooling the planet. There is no global climate change beyond that which has been common to the earth before Iceman had his tattoos. Journalist David Rose, who critically writes about climate policies for the Daily Mail, has been compelled to Hitler. Ironically, he's Jewish. He has been labeled a climate change denier, and someone even suggested that his own children murder him. Well, I don't have any kids, so I don't know who they're going to hope to murder me, but I can't wait to find out. His fault... My article was about climate gate scandal, which leaked emails showing university scientists were trying to cover up data that suggested that their claim that the world is hotter than at any time in the past 1,300 years produced, uh, 3,000 years was wrong, Rose wrote in the article for the Mail. That is 100% fact. That is not my opinion. It is absolute fact. Look up climate gate. He adds that he does believe that human-produced CO2 influences the climate, but he seriously doubts it's the doom models are forecasting. For that, he earned a comment wishing that his children kill him. So he even half but believes in this facade. It's just an excuse to tax you and uh, further entrench us into the UN and control where you move and what you drive. It says he also received messages from self-proclaimed activists telling him that they knew where his family lived and they furnished his personal phone numbers as proof. Bring it, bastards, because I don't believe in it either. My name is Samuel DeGangi. Rose isn't the only denier of which I am, not denier, truth teller, facing such vitriol. In fact, it's rather mild compared to the beheading wish for climate journalist and science writer Matt Ridley. A comment line from an article in The Guardian, since deleted but accessible through Breitbart, says, referencing to chop the head off photo, should that guy be Ridley's severed head in the photo? We would actually solve a great deal of the world's problems by chopping off everyone's head. Why are you deniers so touchy? Mere calls for a beheading evolve 
such a strong response in you people. Ask yourself a simple question. Would the world be a better place without Matt Ridley? Need I explain the question? It was revealed at the comment that was made by Blue Cloud, a.k.a. Gary Evans, who is a Greenpeace activist. Keep in mind, one of the two founding members of Greenpeace have since joined common sense and logic and reason and also declared that man is not warming the planet. Man-made global warming is a lie. And that's why uh, they got the dumdy of the day. Not to mention you said it to a Jewish man. Friend, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGangie signing off, reminding you to look up the work of Kyle Court D. Lake and myself at The Media Speaks. Hit subscribe, low def. Hit subscribe, high def. Um, let me know you're out there. Leave comments. You can donate to the show if you want to at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. And again, look up the Kickstarter campaign that Passing Time is doing. And instead of donating money to a cop that will beat somebody senseless, go ahead and donate to the band. Thanks, friends. Good night, and uh, God bless.